You just got a Mazda Speed 3 and you're a complete dummy. What do you do? Yo, what is up guys? I'm so pumped on the channel growing so much in the last couple months. Like we're almost to 1,000 subscribers, what? I appreciate all of you guys here. Just drop a comment, like introduce yourself, blah, blah, blah. I will reply to all the comments. I will do that as long as I freaking can. That is so sick when I have people commenting, like we all have something in like that we like or in common or whatever. We have the same car, etc. It's super dope. So, but I mean, just since there's so many new subscribers, I want to like, just take this time and I have this great studio. Thank you, Rock Church. Appreciate it. I was doing some work here, so I'm taking advantage of the studio. But uh, yeah, so to give you a little background on myself, if you're a new subscriber, uh, my name is Cameron Alfred. I'm 20 years old. I got into the car scene about a year and a half ago when I got my 2012 Mazda Speed 3 here in San Diego. I go to school full time. Um, I am doing the business transfer degree program. I don't know if I'm going to transfer. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have uh, another two semesters after this one. And then I gotta figure it out. So, but for now, I'm gonna be making car videos on my YouTube channel because that's what's fun to me and I like doing and I love making videos. That is my passion. So, that's a little bit about me. I am from, I originally from Yuma, Arizona. Um, yeah, it's hot there. It's very hot. It's fun though in the winter. The winters are great. You have this river and the sand dunes, but I grew up around all motorsport stuff, but everybody kinda had trucks where I was from and I had a truck. Um, that's that thing a little bit. Uh, it was nice, but uh, yeah, so I never really had any cars. None of my buddies were into cars, really, so I've kind of like, I've literally come into the car scene and like modding a car completely blind, and now I feel like I know enough for the year and a half later to make this video for you guys. So, you have your brand new, brand new used <laughs> Mazda Speed, it's completely stock. Do whatever the heck you want to to the outside, lowering springs, etc. blah, 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 blah. Uh, but as far as the motor, that's why you came here, because you don't want to mess anything up. You don't want to blow up your engine. You don't want to be one of those people on the forums complaining because you messed something up. So the first thing I recommend doing once you, okay, so the goal of this video is to make your car as fun as possible, as fast as possible, and as safe as possible. So what I mean, so let's go into it. First thing, you just got this car. Take it to an exhaust shop right now and have them chop that resonator off. It's the pipe in the middle. It has a little bracket over it you take the four bolts out you cut it out you put a straight pipe in your car will be a little bit louder and it's going to make you happier more smiles per gallon uh that'll make it a little bit louder that'll make you really happy so then from there you're gonna that's gonna cost you i don't know anywhere from 20 to 60 bucks depending on who you go to from there you're gonna go and buy 350 dollars us retail Oh, it's so expensive. High pressure fuel pump internals from Autotech or Corksport. That's the only two I can think of off the top of my head. I bought the Autotech. They work freaking great. So go buy those. Install those. I don't have a video on my channel of those, so look up someone else's to install those. It's pretty simple. I did it with my dad. I wish I would have filmed it, but it was way before I started making videos of everything. So high pressure fuel pump internals. So that's going to get you, when you start modding and you get an intake and you have more air going to the, the motor, you're gonna have the fuel to push in there just as fast to keep up with the more air. So if you get an intake before you get these internals, when you're at wide open throttle, your car is gonna run lean because it can't get enough fuel because the fuel pump cannot put enough pressure to the engine to keep up with the more air coming in. So just listen to me, high pressure fuel pump internals, do it. After that, 100% intake. And if you want to get a turbo inlet pipe with it, if you have the money. Once you have an intake, you're gonna wanna do a bypass valve so a lot of people are like if you're like noob noob like i was i was like oh like i just want to have a blow off valve so i can hear the tss noise as fast as possible when you upgrade to a short ram intake you're going to get that noise that you're looking for but before that some people are like well the first thing i want to do to my car is get a is to get a blow off valve before an intake so it doesn't don't do that so these cars are full research. So you hear about, oh, am I full research or VTA, vent to atmosphere? Which one? These cars on the regular tune, they are full research. It, the, mo the pressure comes out of the bypass valve and that extra air blowing, recirculating, goes to a sensor to make sure your AFRs are right and everything, if I am correct. Co correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So what you need to do is you get an intake, and then get a bypass valve. So what that's gonna do is, once you get an intake, you are gonna be able to hear your turbo pretty loud and it's gonna whistle when you get on the gas. After that, when you get a bypass valve, what's gonna happen is it's gonna make your 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 like 
your purge a little bit louder and sound a lot different. It's super fun. Yo, I'm in post-production and I totally spaced a rear motor mount. That will definitely be important after, whenever you can, as soon as possible, and then get a passenger motor mount and a transmission motor mount. Get those as soon as possible, whenever you feel like you need to, but just know that your motor will be very sturdy compared to before, and the rear motor mount is like the go-to passenger motor mount, a lot a lot more cabin noise than that, but about like 5,000 miles after you break it in, like it is like, like it's so nice knowing that your motor's not shaking around. I don't have the transmission motor mount yet, but I've heard only good things, so definitely get motor mounts ASAP. After you have done that, what I would go from there is buy an access port V3 version 3. It's about 650 bucks. It hurts, it hurts, but it's so worth it. So worth it. You can like monitor all your levels in your car, your AFR, your coolant level, your coolant temps, etc., your knock retard levels, everything. Um, so yeah, so once you get that, you can watch everything, monitor your engine's completely safe. Once you have your access port, then what you're gonna wanna go do is buy a high flow cat or a catless downpipe. Um, if you can, depending on the state you live in, my car's registered in Arizona back at my parents' house so I don't have to do smog or anything. So I have a catless downpipe, 100%. Funnest thing ever, like if you can go catless, if not high flow cat, it's still like almost as good. So when you do put the downpipe on, it gets a lot louder and like you start it up, you're like, oh. So from there, you're gonna have fully catless or high flow cat to a resolute, and then you're gonna go back to your stock muffler. Now with my setup and my situation, I have catless, I'm completely straight piped all the way to the stock muffler. And then I welded on four inch tips, like burnt tips, as you've seen in some of my previous videos. And this setup is like just the right amount of loud. Like when I'm in first gear and like rev it out to like 5K and the deceleration, it just screams. It's super loud, that it, but like, do I want louder sometimes? Absolutely, but like my neighbors already hate me with the cold starts at 2k RPM at like 7 in the morning. It's like, oh, it's just loud. So would I go louder if I like didn't live in an apartment complex? Perhaps, maybe, but it's so much, it's so like loud that anybody in the car is like, holy crap, this thing's loud. So it's definitely the right way to go. Once you have a catalyst downpipe, you're pretty much at, you're running a stage two tune in the off with the off the shelf tunes in the access port. So if you don't know, the access port comes with tunes. So like a safe mode, uh, stage one, stage two, stage three, or like stage two plus downpipe. So there's everything you have, you need to like have for your parts. So those are off the shelf tunes. But at this point, what you need to do is you need to like go to like Purple Drink or Freak Tune or Tune by Nishan and have a professional Cobb uh, tuner do that. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna record a log on your access port on the freeway where you like, I think you're in like fourth gear and you rev it out to redline or something. You just follow the directions basically. But you're gonna log some stats on your car where you're running it and then you email that file, you plug it back in your computer, you get that file, you email it to the tuner and then they're gonna make a tune for you, send it back, you install that on your access port and then you run it and then if everything's good, you send it back to them again, the results, and then, then they crank up the boost and send it to you back again and then you should be at that point just right or if not, minor adjustments. So from there, um, you're completely safe with tunes. So I would do that before the downpipe. Now just do the downpipe and then do that. And then from there, um, and you then after this, after the downpipe is a front mount intercooler I would do. Um, that just gets your boost temps lower. Um, you can hold boost higher PSI because the air is colder, I think that's how it works. I'm gonna wait until, I'm probably gonna wait until I get a front mount intercooler so I have all my parts because once you add a part on after a professional tune, you wanna have it retuned and usually they charge like a fee for that. Uh, my cars, AFRs and everything are running just right uh, and I have everything except a front mount intercooler. So once I get that, I'm gonna have it professionally tuned. So that's my experience, everything's fine, everything's safe, reliable, I've driven, I drive it all the freaking time. Uh, all my levels are good, but yeah. So I mean, at that point, you I mean you're about stage three, um, and then once you get a tune, you also have the option of adding an E85 tune onto that, so you can do 30% E85, 70% 91, and you get like 100 horsepower. I've heard, I heard it's nuts. So I haven't done that yet. I'm excited. I will make videos on that in the future, but uh, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. But I mean. As far as the outside, uh, I mean, the other, only little other thing I would do is like a JBR short shift plate. That helps. I put mine about in the middle. It's adjustable. Um, it's fun. Third gear is kind of hard to hit when it's in the high RPMs, but 
I like it driving daily driving. It's a little bit shorter. It's fun. But uh, other than that, that's current build. That's everything I would do if you have Mazda Speed 3. That's a long list and it can be a lot of money. So I think that's a good place to start. But uh, thanks guys for watching and uh, appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. And new subscribers, welcome again. And I appreciate all of you. Later.